Hello guys, it is the morning after the night before Arsenal have lost 1-0 to Barte Borisov in the first leg of their Europa League tie. Um, I didn't record a video last night because I had watched the game and it was Valentine's Day and much as I love football, I marginally do love my wife more. I um, didn't love football very much at all last night, I have to say. Terrible result, there's no two ways about it. Dreadful result, dreadful performance. Um, Really poor, really poor. I mean, Arsenal absolutely should be beating a side of Barto's quality, especially without uh, them having any football in their legs. They're effectively in pre-season. Um, apologies, someone's hammering. It might just be an Arsenal fan banging their head against the wall. Who knows? Um, so, yeah, really, really disappointing stuff. I know we created some chances early on, but I thought generally the way that we tried to break them down was pretty uninspired. Um, I do, I do have some disagreement with people who say that this is a, an issue of three at the back. I don't think it's about the fact that we're playing three at the back. Uh, the clue to me, I mean, if you call it five at the back or three at the back, three I think is more representative, genuinely, of how Arsenal play it and certainly how they played it last night. Kolasinac and Maitland-Niles, their starting position is so high and I do think the reason Emery's selecting three at the back is actually not really because he doesn't trust the centre halves I think it's because he doesn't trust his full backs defensively and because he he doesn't have wingers I think that is the main thing I think if we had Perisic or Carrasco we would be playing four at the back because we'd have a player in wide areas capable of getting to the byline getting crosses in we don't have that the closest thing we have to that is, say, Kolasinac. Hector Bellerin was a, another player who could do that. We're hoping Ainsley Maitland-Niles can do it. But I actually think that Emery genuinely deploys this 3-4-3, three, three, I would call it, uh, for attacking reasons, because he thinks that's our, our best way of getting in. Now, that has its problems, uh, and part of the problems is the fact that those players in other creative attacking areas aren't delivering enough you know Iwobi and Mkhitaryan and I thought were poor against Barte um, I also think we have to look at our central midfield it's interesting you know we've all been very excited about Torreira and Gunduzi this season but I don't think we should allow that excitement to mean we overlook it when they they don't necessarily contribute and uh, when you play the system that we did play last night there is a big onus on those two players because Iwobi and Mkhitaryan yes they're in front of them but they're slightly wide uh, and I think particularly Gendouzi, you're asking him to get into the, the final third to sort of connect things up to an extent. Without a number 10 there, he, in that kind of number 8 role, it's not a defensive role, has a really big part to play. I thought he fell well short. And that's what's going to happen with young players. There's going to be inconsistency. He was magnificent at Man City. I think we all saw that. In the two games since, he's not been nearly as good. And I think you've got to call that for what it is. We know about Shaka's inconsistency. And Lucas Torreira... Um, has gone really off the boil. You know, if you think about the tremendous impact he made when he came in, how excellent he was in the 4-2 win over Spurs, he hasn't produced a performance at close to that level since. And I think that's why he's been left out of the team, to be honest. Maybe he's struggling physically with the, you know, the lack of a winter break, the sheer uh, frenetic pace of the Premier League, which he is new to. And it's all understandable. And this is not writing any of these players off, but I think in the middle of part we are missing players. Speaking of missing players, people say, well, there was no Aaron Ramsey in the squad, there was no Mesut Ozil in the squad. Yeah, there wasn't. And I think, you know, Emery's issues with Ozil are a big topic of discussion. I think yesterday actually is probably a bit of a red herring. Both Ramsey and Ozil had one training session, you know, and thus subsequently weren't picked. The same as Socrates, who wasn't picked. Aubameyang had had more training sessions and was picked. Uh, do I think Ozil would have been selected in the team anyway? No. Do I think he would have come off the bench? Probably not. But the way I see it, the kind of decision on Ramsey and Ozil has been made, and it is certainly in large part a financial one. There are footballing reasons too. Yes, Emery could be playing them, but I'm kind of like out with the old, in with the new. It's how I see it. We're in a process of evolution. This is a season of transition. And we're going in a new direction. Uh, those players definitely need replacing. Looking at the quality of the performance we produced yesterday, we miss players. 
with that calibre. But Ramsey is going. Fact. And to be honest, Ozil is going. Like, it, it looks that way to me. So they, we need alternatives. And I'm excited to find out who those alternatives are because I wonder if there'll be players who could deliver more than they could offer. Um, so yeah, three at the back. I don't think that's the issue. I recognise some of our best performances this season come with four, but I can see Emery's reason for choosing three. I think the issue is about what we do on the ball. Um, and that's where I am worried. There's a lack of confidence on the ball. There's a lack of quality on the ball. I can't remember an Arsenal game where so many players looked so poor on the ball as they did yesterday. Why is that? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the manager must take responsibility. He's responsible for performances. Is it that he's given these players instructions with what to do on the ball that aren't suiting them? Is it that the confidence is just so low? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I will offer some mitigation. It's hard to break down two banks of almost five that Barto had at times yesterday, especially when you know they know what you're going to do. They know you're going to overload in wide areas, which is what the wing back system gives you, um, and they work against that. And we didn't really have an alternative plan. And maybe we're encountering something here where we're so reliant on plan A, Kalasinac, and when it doesn't work, we don't seem to know what to do with ourselves. You know, in every game, it feels like Alex Iwobi is our most creative player. But every creative interaction he has with the ball is to find Kalasinac. Um, but where else is that creativity, you know? And I appreciate you'll be sitting at home going, well, you're saying there's not create enough creativity and yet you don't advocate playing airs or... I don't mind as a playing, but I also it's clear to me what's going on. It's clear to me that the club are sort of saying you're not really welcome here anymore. We don't want you here, and they're basically trying to give him no choice but to leave in the summer. And uh, given the financial constraints we're under, and given the exorbitant salary he costs, I kind of support that position. I kind of see the logic in it that they could get two or three players who could probably help us more for that for that kind of money. It's not going to happen now, though, and it ain't going to be particularly pretty between now and the end of the season. I sort of accept that. Like, I'm prepared to kind of sit this out, wait this out. Um, I find it surprising how few people are, but that's football, isn't it? You know, people people are impatient. Uh, I wanted Arsene Wenger out, but only after about 10 years of thinking it wasn't going to get better. After six months of thinking it's not going to get better, and in fact, quite a few periods in that six months where I thought it was going to get better, I'm surprisingly patient. Uh, we played Chelsea and beat them 2-0. When was that? When was that Chelsea game? Can't find it now. I'm going to do this. It's going to take time. Arsenal results. Because it's so easy to forget You know how... How much of a high everyone was on at that time. So we played Chelsea January 19th. So that is approximately a month ago. Uh, four weeks really. Not one, two, three. Not even four weeks ago. And in that period since then, we've played one, two, three, four, five games. Uh and people have seen enough in that run. It's a game, by the way, it's a run that includes Manchester United and Manchester City to decide that Emery's not going to be good enough. Maybe he won't be good enough. I'm not particularly attached to him. I don't really care. Like, if he stays or goes, he's not my mate. I'm not bothered about it. But I just don't think it's a fair test. And honestly, I sort of look at it and I go, who else are you going to get? It's reminded me a bit of people like last season saying they wanted... Diego Simeone or um, Allegri from Juventus. Imagine the uproar now at the defensive football if we were seeing that then from them. I think they'd probably be getting better results. I don't doubt that. They're better managers. But why would they come to Arsenal? Why would they come to Arsenal? I just think there's a sort of lack of realism about where we are, about how good this team is about what the quality of the players is because it is comf it is the sixth best team in the league right in England no better than that and about how big a, a rebuilding job we're going through just because we've changed a lot of players in the last two years I don't think that makes us much closer half the players we've bought were 30 
So the rebuilding job is very much ongoing. Anyway, this is like the longest one of these I've ever done. It's because I'm not doing a podcast, probably. Right. Bye.